LEC Winter 2023 All Pro Teams. First team, Photon, Elioia, Caps, Hansama, Mickey. Second team, Broken Blade, Yike, Niski, Exa Kick, and Hillisang. Third team, Chasey, Markoon, Larson, Comp, and Trimby. Let me just pull up my own personal team. And then we go here, Vedias. All right, so this is what we created. So we had Photon, Chasey, Bibi, Elioia, Yike, Malrang, Caps, Niski, Larson, Hansama, Exa Kick, Comp, Mickey, Hilly, Trimby. Um, that is practically practically the same. Uh, BB was put above Chasey. I think that's okay. Like Chasey still, he, he had a strong finals, right? In terms of lane performances. But a lot of the fights, he played very bad. Like he got caught on Jace. He got W, Batalia. And it gave G2 a lot of opportunities to swing back. Why is everyone saying Mickey is good? I think Mickey, if if you pay attention, I think, for example, in the final, Mickey won v in the final. Like, Mickey was so insane in the final in terms of how much he achieved in the game. And it's really, really in, in, the, in the nuance of what he does. Uh, it is truly, truly something else uh, what Mickey does. He, uh, I think Mickey deserved the MVP in the final, but I understand why Caps got it too. Caps also, like, deserved it. Caps did the... Uh, Crazy, crazy stuff in the game. Um, Broken Blade, the thing is, Broken Blade had a very large volume of games. And I think that the top end was really, really good. And the low end was really bad. And I think that uh, with a lot of uh, viewers in the community, I think they have a heavy negative bias and remember uh, a lot of the bad. And I think that Broken Blade played with a high level of variance. But I think that he had some really, really strong fucking games. I think that he had some really, really strong games. He had some Jax games that were really, really strong. Olaf games were really, really strong. Uh, I think that's important to highlight. I think Broken Blade uh, was, generally speaking, very strong in the, um, the playoff section of it. Because in the beginning, Photon and Chasey didn't look that great, in my opinion. I think that uh, what he does in comms, I don't really give a shit about because we can't really judge that even with the G2 comms uh, being a thing. But I think Broken Blade had some really, really high end performances, right? If you look at the other top laners that were in conversation, you have Adam. I think Adam had a rough playoffs. I think Relevant did well, but his first series was very poor. I remember many situations where Markoon and Relevant just completely lost their mind and didn't really give a chance for extra kick to carry. And I think this is something that they adjusted right. Um, I think Yike's second place, I think, is deserved. We have a big enough volume of games now to safely say that Yike is not just being carried by his team. Uh, sure, you are a victim of your circumstance. And jungle is a very tough role to, to, um, to judge. For example, Yankos was really, really strong, right? Yankos was really, really strong, and but his team didn't really present him more opportunities to do more. Yankos played a fantastic split. He played a large variance of champions. He had a strong, strong early games and did super, super good. And I felt the same about Malrang. Koi was not converting the advantages that Malrang was giving to the team. And I know that Malrang is a player that a lot of the pro teams don't appreciate so much, which I can understand because inherently, if you judge what he's doing in on in theory it should be bad but often it works and as long as that is true in the context of the league i'm going to value his uh, play style but it is something that is limited but i think this is something that malrang has associated and built through his team malrang in the past before he joined koi i don't remember him to be like this malrang was like the Lee Sin player that, you know, played played well. And coming into Koi, he kind of reinvented himself and recognized, wow, in scrims, everybody's griefing. I can level three gank them and I can get leads. And this is going to work in the regular split. Uh, this is going to work in the LEC. Because, because I can tell you for a fact, Malrang is a player that, together with Koi and Rogue, they have definitely tried to play the farming way. I don't think Malrang is the issue in that regard. It's just that... The way Rogue figured out how they want to play is they're going to use jungle as a catalyst for the lanes to get ahead and then they're going to be able to uh, play their lane through that. 
If that doesn't happen, they get ganked and they get disrupted. It's like Malran ganking. Malran ganking, I think, is tied to also defend your teammates. I'm not saying that Malran became this one-dimensional player only because of its teammates, but this is the identity that Rogue has formed. And that is tied to Malran and it's tied, it's tied to the whole team, right? There's the, I don't think you can necessarily point fingers. But I appreciate what Malran does, and as long as it works, you know, I think uh, he deserves praise. But I think putting Markun here is perfectly fine too. I think Markun had some really, really good performances. I think his Sejuani games, Elise games were really, 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 really crispy. So I, I think it's perfectly fine to put Markun here. I think you could really, really easily have a conversation about many different junglers here. Because I think Jankus was fantastic. I think Malran was good. I think Markun was great. I think Yike was fantastic. Elioya, I think, was clear number one. For sure, Elioya was clear number one because his, his level performance was gorgeous. I think in, in the finals against G2, he tried a little bit too hard to carry, uh, which I completely understand in the context of how the games were looking like and how they were facing this giant and they were trying to throw anything uh, at the wall. Uh, I think Bo is someone that uh, I think that he plays a very, very high-risk style. And I think that, um, you know, Vitality lost her mind with a lot of things. I think Bo's regular split games later on were quite terrible on the Vi. And um, I think that Bo really, really fell off. But I think that's not necessarily tied to Bo. I think it's tied to the team as well. I think the team Vitality was really, really struggling. You know, and I have to say, when it comes to vitality, the person who, in my opinion, uh, deserves the most praise is, of course, Photon. I think Photon carried, like, if I look at the regular split, for me, Photon was the regular split MVP. He managed to put vitality first place and he single handedly, or well, he used two hands. I don't know where this expression single handedly comes from. It doesn't make any sense. It's like single handedly jerked himself off. Like, I, I don't know why with this expression. He used two hands and he carried like six or five out of nine, like nine games that they played. He had amazing Gwen games, amazing Gragas game. Like he had amazing Na games. He completely shattered some angles. And I think Photon was the MVP of Vitality in the regular split. Yeah, his Gwen was definitely three handed for sure. Larson, Niski, Caps. I think Caps and Niski for sure won too. I think Larson had some decent games. I think I think Larson snuck in here because I don't think anyone else really stood out. I I, I really think mid lane was relatively silent uh, this split, and I think Caps and Niski were the two standout players. I think it it definitely hurt the fact that Perks on Vitality was having a hard time with the team. I think it as well Humanoid with the team being very weak. That's also something that disrupted things, and also just the meta, right? The meta, uh, in general, you know, it was it was very stale. You know, it's like everyone's fucking buying catalysts and drinking from Gragas barrels, and now we're gonna have fucking any any players. Viteo was also a complete mess, you know. So it is what it is. Comp and Trimby deserved. I think their playoff run was really really strong. I think this is a bot lane that deserves praise and respect. I think Exa Kick also belongs here. I think Exa Kick was. Like Exa Kick, you watch him play and you know that this is the type of player that the top teams with the budgets are going to buy. This is just you watch when you watch someone play and you just know Exa Kick is going to uh, have a long lasting career. This is going to be a target. Uh, I'm curious about how long his co contract is, but Exa Kick is 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 a genius. I think Adam deserved at least the third spot. I don't think so. I think he was a very powerful force with BDS, but I think that these three players uh, definitely uh, deserve to be um, um, What are you guys talking about, Cook? Exa kick, I said. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> you guys are mental. You guys are absolutely mental. But yeah, I think this is a very, very fair. I, I think this is completely fair. This is one of the better all pro teams that I've ever seen. How long is contract? Yeah, contract. Did I say cock? How long is co contract? 
I think I have Kazi overcome despite finals. Uh, honestly, Kazi, 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 Kazi. I really liked them in the regular season, but Kazi, bro, even in some of the series that they won, my man was was crazy. Crazy. Let's look at the point breakdown. So Caps was a clear winner. Photon and these these guys were close. Adam won the fourth place, and eleven on fifth. I think that's fair. Bo Malang was quite close. Markun here, very close. Uh, I would have been very sad if Photon lost against Broken Blade. Uh, this is rather close. I think Ansama deserves first place as well. Look at support. Mickey 132 and then Hilly second. That's legit. At least Kazi is decent at getting carried. Uh, I, is, is that an insult or is it a... I don't know what that's supposed to be. Four votes for Kaiser is really troll. I guess it is. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. <laughs> Let's see the voting ballot. Who put points on Kaiser? XL Mert. Damn. That's kind of embarrassing, I'm not gonna lie. That is that is crazy, by the way. And then we have another Kaiser. Lore. Oh. And then we have someone put Kaiser on the second all pro team. Blix GG. Blix GG. Blix GG. Okay. Honestly. I think Kaiser can play a lot better coming into the next split. Like Kaiser, I think, is a very strong player. But in terms of judging his performance, it was very poor. You know? So, I think that's uh, important to say, you know? Um, I think Kaiser and Neo had, Neon had a very poor split. But I think it's important to highlight that this can change, you know? I think, you know... Let's, let's see what are some other egregious examples. Mercer got one point. I think that's kind of wild too. Labrov definitely deserves to be above both. I think Labrov is like a solid fifth, you know? Um, or sixth, you know? Probably misclick from Lore, I don't know. Karzi, okay, Karzi had a decent regular splits, you know? Uh, Shio, I think that besides some of the Wukong games, I think he looked quite... Sapar and I think Shio and Nook were definitely as definitely going to, going to be the weak points for BDS coming into the next split. And then Finn, you know, Finn Finn definitely ramped up at the end of the split and had a good clad game against Adam, you know. Ah, it's crazy to think that the jungle pool is so damn strong in Europe, you know. I think that's super exciting. Uh, I have to say, we have so many good junglers. And this is also in a world where, like, Inspired left for North America, where Whip was not playing. Like, we could have... Such a stacked league uh, in terms of the jungle position if if it was completely, like, filled out, you know? Self-made, yeah, self-made is definitely another one.